Hello and welcome back to Slice and Dice. When I spoke to you, I think last time I said I only had one more video to record, I was wrong. I had two. I miscounted, unfortunately for myself, but that's okay. I love Slice and Dice. It's very good. Let's continue. I'm on. So if I win the last two runs for my backlog, I will take second place, but I will not upload it in case some of you go look at the leaderboards. I'll let these be surprises for you. Let's round it up, shall we? I'm tempted by magical every time I see it. Five to 18 mana debt. No, that is fucking awful. That is so bad. Uh, we play item poison here. I think item poison is middle of the road, but it, the problem with item poison is it makes marginal items significantly worse. Really good high impact items are unaffected by this, but things that are just kind of okay, they are uh, made basically unplayable by item poison. I think at the end of this streak, by the way, either at win 100 or if I lose, I will. Why did I lock this is what you're thinking to yourself right now. And the answer is because I saw this is just kind of how the process goes right now. I see a line like one plus one equals two and I go, OK, lock that. No need to keep rolling for better or for worse. Anyway, uh, at the end, I'm going to go through and I'm going to look at every video and I'm going to do a little stats breakdown at the end of uh, what curses I took and my boss fights, which I can uh, tell you, we can look right now if you want to see the bosses as of this moment. Final bosses are all I'm really going to look at. We fought 21 or 20 Hexias on the streak. My one loss of, of this file since I reset it was to Hexia. Uh, so 20 fights against Hexia, 22 versus Dragon, 26 versus The Hand, and 31 versus Inevitable. Pretty cool. I don't like Cleric very much, but I will continue to spout out the truth. Collector is very bad. He is... He would be an okay orange, I think, but he is so bad as a yellow. Because yellows are so high quality. One mana from Acolyte is fine. Two mana from Cleric is two mana. And... Okay. I wanted to see... Do you think it's viable to kill the chest here? That's the question. No, I don't think so. Because look at the position it puts us in to kill the chest. I have to... I have to let my brigand die to kill the chest, which I think isn't worth it. Although, what, what round is this? This is fight two. You know what? I'm going to take a shot here. I think that this trade might be worth it. Brigand dies, I get an item. I think that I'm not under real threat of losing. Like, this fight is a foregone conclusion. And the next fight is not a hard fight, it's fight three. So going down half HP is fine. I got a fucking awful reward, hat dot student. And that's why we don't make big risks, but I don't think that risk was particularly big. Sorcery notes is pretty awful actually it was completely useless last time and for item poison definitely not neither of these are items i would equip because of item poison so i will take a random corset uh probably still a no but let's go on scoundrel this is all you by the way i manifested this it wasn't i didn't even consider this fight as scary i already knew i could feel it coming yeah just side by side gladiator versus uh collector who you picking that's what I thought. Come on, troll. I can actually roll Acolyte here because heal one cleanse is pretty decent. I'm not locking heal shield three to block one damage, though. I'm just going to take away. Actually, I have light. I should not have rolled like this. It's OK. Uh, I'm going to play it anyway. I should I should have kept the one man on Acolyte. I wasn't thinking about playing light into that, but it is really good. I was thinking maybe I would hold out, but no. I just lock it. In the, uh, insane performance out of Scoundrel. I don't know what else to say. Incredible work, Scoundrel. Fucking woke up and locked in. I'm not happy with you. You're still a piece of shit. But, you know. You do this shit more often. Maybe we could talk. Maybe I would downgrade you to just, like, a pile of shit. Was that an upgrade? That might be bad. It might actually be worse. Maybe I could upgrade you to, um, I don't know, not as bad. I'm okay with Halo Acolyte because she can save herself through item poison, potentially. I'm kind of inconsistent on if I lock or don't lock. You know what I will say? I think Cleric was not a bad pickup for this run. 
because of item poison. Cleric was a little bit better. Not that it was close, it wasn't like a choice that I was thinking about anyway. I like both of these characters. I'm kind of leaning a little bit towards Herbalist, but that's skewed because my Scoundrel has been high rolling, and I should try to think about this more reasonably. Spellblade is fine, but very item dependent, I think, and my items are unknown. I'm gonna go Spellblade. I, I need to talk myself down. I'm. The problem there is that I can't make a correct, quote-unquote, correct choice, because I am just... I I'm biased, for sure, in that position. There's no reason to pretend like I'm not. I just watched Scoundrel roll a perfect score, like actual back-to-back-to-back, -to -back -to -back, no misses. There is no way I can make that choice unbiased, because th there's two ways to think about this, right? Number one, I pick Spellblade because Scoundrel is bad. Okay. Number two, though, the second layer is, what was the other option? It was Herbalist. I could pick Herbalist there because I think that Scoundrel is not very good, but I think that Scoundrel's been performing well. But am I just picking Herbalist? Is Spellblade the better pick because I'm like... Or, how do I put this? Is Spellblade a worse pick because I'm trying to overcompensate is the question. Am I overcompensating mentally because I think that Scoundrel is so bad? Does this make sense? Is, is what I'm saying making sense here? I'm not sure that Spellblade is the correct pick because I might be rating Scoundrel too low and I might be thinking, well, obviously this is the pick because Scoundrel is so bad. But is Scoundrel really so bad? I don't know. It's a tough one to say. Incense Spellblade is historically pretty decent. The thing about Incense, I used to think this was so bad, but Bright is good because it lets you be more aggressive if you have the right side, because you can let these guys roll X's and still get value. But I'm not going to take either of these because I don't want to equip them with item poison. So give me a random. Sure. Uh, it pairs with Corset, I guess. I'll equip it in fights where it makes sense. Imagine my Spellblade with two poison here. For what? Lightning Rod? Yeah. Cool. I think I'm gonna Shield Acolyte though. Just clear that poison off while I have the opportunity and save two HP. Wow, sleep. Take it easy, man. You see how I'm locking this? I should not be. I need to like shift mentally. I'm thinking I'm going to mentally shift into a wolf. What do you guys think? That'd be pretty badass, wouldn't it? Maybe even physically? Just like, you know, ow. You feel me? I told you, end of day recordings, when I'm recording so many goddamn videos, I'm going to make no fucking sense. What am I talking about? Druid or Seer? Druid's pretty good. Seer is fine. I like Seer a lot with Spellblade locked in and Cleric, actually. I think Seer gets a little bit more power because I have good blues supporting him. And I'm down to take the poison for Spellblade here. Into this fight, Lightning Rod, especially with the mana gain we have, it's pretty strong. And for once in our lives, Gaitha isn't that bad. I'm supposed to lock that for sure. If I X out here, it's quite not good. So I can light out of this, and it's actually, it's pretty strong to do so, but I'm only saving one mana for doing that. It makes me wonder if maybe I should go after Magrat here instead. Since I'm counteracting Gaitha's turn, maybe I should set up on Magrat here. What do I do if she does this cleave again? And then puts on a 7 into one of my dying characters. Yeah, no, you don't like Kaito Lu. That's just silly. This feels like the sort of choice that leads us down a very bad line in the end. Let's just do this and save the light. It's okay. Technically not great, because like, you know, I, uh, there's a lot of reasons it's technically not great. But basically, my opinion here is get over it. I'm gonna cleanse Spellblade, because otherwise Spellblade's gonna have trouble dying. Or not dying, but... Well, yes, dying. Spellblade's gonna have trouble with dying when I'm killing Agnes, if I don't cleanse that poison off now. And 
Gladiator kind of just pulled up and hit back-to-back -back floors on these idiots, which is incredible. He can take a day off if he wants. He just sort of walked in and obliterated this fight for me. Absolutely clutched it. You love to see it. Magic Staff Spellblade, huh? That's pretty good. Soup is also not bad, but Magic Staff Spellblade is really good, and it pairs well into the end game. Plays super, super well into a lot of end game units, but I'm kind of thinking maybe I want to do something like this for now. Magic Staff Acolyte, and then I keep the Spellblade juiced into this fight anyway. We can move it around as it makes sense. Just roll Spellblade for the... Never mind. There's a lot of ideas here that are competing in my mind. I think maybe... You just go like this. How's that feel? That feels worse. I think this is silly. There's no reason to play for fourth health. I can just go... Hold on. I can go this way. I think it's better. I think playing for Fortel, you have 9 mana, but they're gaining HP. It doesn't make sense. You're losing so much HP, they're gaining so much HP. There's no reason to Fortel there. If I was confident that after Fortel, I would live the second turn, I would think about it a little more. Right, and now this magic staff goes over to Spellblade, which turns Spellblade into an absolute monster. And then sometimes we're going to play this thing, Lightning Rod, but not in this fight. That doesn't seem good. Maybe a three? Hmm. I need to minimize the HP that my Spellblade loses here. Maybe sneak in a little light. And I can potentially just infuse. Yeah, it's no big deal. The shade low rolled and didn't hit a five on me here, which is very nice. Go for a two damage imbue. Yeah, okay. Finish. Cool. Learn formation or replace the rightmost side with four damage duplicate. Four damage duplicate is really good for an R item. I would take one poison for this. No way you play formation here. I would play this, and this can go on Seer, who let, this lets me roll a little more aggressively for 3 mana. I've already been pretty aggressive. Make sure in this fight you are registering the fact that Carrier Fanatic Fanatic is scary. If your goal is to take 0 deaths, it's going to be hard here. Just make sure you clock that as you walk in. I think with that in mind, I roll for 2 shield. Okay, keep our 2 damage self shield and we probably just put it into the Carrier. I don't want this. I want two mana. It's the only thing that makes sense here. Now we go light, burst, burst. And we go like... I kind of want to put a three into a fanatic, but... Nah. And two damage self-heal vampire would have been nice to kill off one of these fanatics. But you know what? I'll be okay. Two damage kills this imp. One damage for that fanatic. Heal five, burst, burst. Deal. Gone. Don't be bad. Not great. I think you pick witch here. I don't really like Paladin, but I guess he has no X's. Hmm. I can be convinced to click on Paladin here. My brain is really bad with Paladin, though. For some reason, I always want to lock 4 damage heavy. Not on you, though. You're not supposed to be locking 4 damage heavy, buddy. You're supposed to be locking, yeah, like, shield 4 cleanse, exactly. 
just about to start complaining about no two damage mana gains. Now, am I supposed to just go like... I think that's right. Maybe two mana first and I can go three on this guy. And a four pal. That feels good. I mean, it's 20 damage if I roll that and I just want to send damage. 20 damage is quite a lot. Okay, I know what I said about locking 4 damage man or 4 damage heavy, but 4 damage heavy is really good here. So I just go like 4 tell, 4 tell. I have no reason to defend anything anyway. If they're gonna summon, I may as well just pummel the boss, right? Absolutely fucking not. Are you insane? Jump puts cleanse on his top and bottom sides. Oh fuck, jump puts copycat on Spellblade's mana gain sides? That doesn't seem that good, does it? But I'm kind of down for jump anyway. Hourglass is pretty decent for Spellblade and whoever ends up with the item. I want to go jump though, it sounds really fun. Two damage, mana gain, copycat. There's a world where in the next pick I get Sorcerer and this run is over. Completely finished, if that happens. Even just now we get engage four mana gain, which is pretty good. No lights left, but that's okay. It's just, is it consistent enough at, at this point? I don't know. Two sides with what I need? Hard to say. What am I even playing for, right? Right now, not much. Down the line, well, there's a lot of good hits, really. Doesn't feel great wasting mana, so I think I won't. I'm... Pretty sure it's lethal, right? Yeah, the Basilisk is just numerically dead. Seems right. Well, Ghast is not the character I want here, so Prophet it is. It's just weird because usually you want a copycat. I mean, we could get Heal 2 Mana Gain Rescue for whatever that's worth. Not a lot because I feel like with the poison we're dying right away a lot. Two damage self shield. I can roll one time for the four. All right. If you roll an X, your spell blade, so be it. Hmm. It happens a lot more than you would think, though. And that's right. It's supposed to happen that way. I'm supposed to settle for two mana there. I should not be pushing my luck, especially not in a fight with this much poison going out. Yeesh. Could put four two two into troll. I really just want to go for some soothing here. One burst, two foretells. We double soothe and then this fight looks so much less frightening. I believe. The cleanse looks decent. Growth on the mana gain seems good too. Let me go soothe. Lens, heal, triple foretell. I'm gonna skip over this, although, yeah, I need to skip over this or else I accidentally kill Prophet here. No reason to put two damage self shield into this ogre. And I believe you guys can just go now. Wandcraft Flute. Flute gives Cantrip for Spellblade. Wandcraft is interesting. It's okay, it's like, but the problem with Wandcraft is I don't know if it's good or not, because it depends entirely on my blue. So I think I'll go with Flute. And we'll just drop that over on Prophet, who should probably have the Faint Halo, actually. And then I want to try to spread my item poison out as well as I can. You don't want a bunch of people with two, you want a bunch of ones here so that I can just soothe one time to neutralize it.
That ain't right. I'm just gonna look for mana, I guess, to save my spell blade. Ah, uh, cantrip in the wrong order. Man. Minus two for what? I think you could soothe here, but I'd rather break both intangibles and get one foretell it. Foretell is a soothe on the next turn if I need it. Hopefully they don't just, yeah, super eliminate my spell blade. But the only way to get around my Spellblade getting eliminated here is to break Intangible. And I'm going to not greed. I learned my lesson. Saddle for two mana. Hmm. One Soothe, one Heal. Two Foretells, Blind Leaves. It's not... There's a lot of ways to play this fight through. You could just kill the ghosts there, but I think that neutralizing poison is the simplest way to play. I don't have to think too much about a line where I neutralize all the poison. I just do it. And then when I have lethal, I take it. Wizard is a staff user. The problem for wizard is the, the endless, the eternal problem for every character in this game at tier 3. Wizard is good, the setup is perfect, who's he against? Well, I mean, look man, it's real simple. Wanderer is just better. I'm sorry, wizard, but it's the truth. And I'm gonna take this duplicate off. I could put it over on Paladin, but I don't think it's all that good. I guess if I roll it, I do just kill Troll King, so I can put it on here. Floor cleanse for a little poison, but I kind of want to roll down. This is greedy. This is so greedy. I should, but the poison is so high from item poison plus this that I just kind of go. Okay. Message received. I take the cleanse. I take the two mana. I think I'll roll seer. And I think I'll take this three damage because co copycat cleanse. Copycat's really good, actually. And three damage is your worst hit. Copycat's very good here. Copycat Cleanse, Copycat Mana Gain, both are viable. I kind of want to Copycat Mana Gain, actually. And then just give myself two Fortels. Remember what I was talking about? Three Fortels, even. Remember the two ways to beat Troll King, right? Option one, just kill him. Option two, if you have profit, put up like five Soothes. This guy cannot kill you if you put up five Soothes. If you, you have to kill the Slate and then put up five Soothes, so. Six damage, cool. Message received. I'm gonna roll for it, but if I get four damage heavy, I'm sad. All right, you get a double save off a of profit, which is cool. Troll King dies if I want him to. I don't really know if I want him to. How bad is it, Spellblade? What about if I do... Oh, no amount of soothes saves Spellblade in this position. Okay, it's kill slate or die. And no amount of soothes. It could be... It could just be... Okay, I think in this position... How many bursts is it to save everyone? No, it's gotta be Kill Troll King. There's no way it isn't. One Soothe, one Heal Shield. This is for sure the correct choice. There's no way you do anything else here. Why the fuck are they so mad at Spellblade, though? Make it make sense. Anything good to copycat off of here? Maybe Rescue, but probably not. Growth is okay. Copycat growth. Growth mana gain. Shield goes there. One soothe. I'm out of my poison debt, which is nice. I'm gonna play this completely safe, which is to just put up the extra soothe. Is there only two soothes? There's only two soothes. That's not too bad. Alright. No complaints. 
Trident or Sushi? Trident's pretty decent. Is it worth an item poison? Mm, it's okay. Probably fine. What about Sushi? Sushi plays really, really well with jump. I can jump the Sushi for Cantrip. But it's not great. I think I will pick up this Sushi because I have Flute as well. I have Flute, I have Jump, which means I have so much value. I have Wander as well. I have so much value from rerolls. It's kind of crazy. And maybe if I hit Silk Cape, the run ends. That's the other thing about this now. This is a setup. Sushi Silk Cape is already very good, of course, but now it's like hard winning. GG. I shouldn't have locked this. I should be roll looking here. I'm going to roll down. Yeah, it's okay. No copycats, that's all right. I want to protect Spellblade. I kind of just want to go Fortell, Fortell. Maybe like Imbue and then Kill a Wisp is fine. Because the Fanatics are, they low roll, but they're going to die. The troll is just going to put AoE damage down, and if I put up enough soothes, the troll will never kill me. He can never catch up. I settle. You definitely settle there. You don't want to risk sucking out. It can happen. It's not good if it does. These fanatics are so conservative. They are not launching themselves into the sun. They're just kind of chilling. But it's fine. I have... It looks scary. You look at this position and it looks kind of frightening. But I have. To, you have to know that I'm only in this position because I put up 21 mana before this. Through Fortel. Uh, I wouldn't push my luck here. I especially I have Defy as a play, so I can get a plus one. A little extra rescue value for profit before I go, uh... However you want to go about this is fine. I guess I'll just kill. Warlock is good. I think I play Warlock, and I'm pretty sure that means I stick it out with Spellblade here. I think what Warlock means is you go Sushi Flute, probably on Paladin. I cleanse Poison with him, and then Faint Halo goes here. Now, is this right? That's an interesting question for sure. What I should do as well is sneak in a little lightning rod for Wanderer. I'm not going to give him an extra poison, though. I don't think it makes a lot of sense. You want to hit that lightning rod, buddy? Okay, we'll take three. And then hold. This is correct. It's just kind of odd. Oh, especially since they're double hitting my spell blade again. Can be. Maybe this two damage hit? No. It could be actually imbue three, three. Burst, burst, heal here. This makes no sense. Alright, I'm losing time for no reason. Let's move on to the true reality. This is just what they want. This is how Slice and Dice is meant to be played against the chomps. Oh, I don't want to pass my turn, man. This sucks. Blaze this guy, then I have to kill you. Yeah, I have to pass my turn and just bank mana. Uh, okay, I should probably reroll something then. I can reroll Wanderer. Maybe he gets the Lightning Rod. Depressing. I could also 
die if I get like a super crazy cantrip hit. Hmm. Can I lead off with this then? And then... I'm not supposed to blaze, I'm just supposed to go... Still can die to crazy cantrips. With the first burst, this is so gross. Oh yuck, I hate that play. But I think it's the only one that makes sense to do. There's no reason to speed through this chomp fight. I have to fight a chomp, I have to fight a chomp. Eventually I will hit something that wins. You just gotta take your time. Look at that, I almost did hit the crazy cantrip combo that kills my spellblade. And you are dying. Not you though. Just Warlock is dying, so I have to burst him. And I am U3. And we soothe once more. Alright. We're through the world's most annoying fight. Once again, I have defeated the evil. That was only fight 18. I thought that was 19. Time Stone is really silly, if you want it. It's, I, I need to emphasize, really, really silly to play Time Stone. Because you play Time Stone on this 4 damage duplicate, all of your sides become 4 damage cantrip, and then you just have every roll is 20 damage. But the problem is if that's the last thing you roll in a turn, or if I pick this and go into Inevitable, it's really bad. So, we have to play safe. Unfortunately. Although, you can still get pretty decent value out of Triple Shuriken here. Range Duplicate is pretty decent. I'm thinking I kind of want to just go Triple Shuriken on Wanderer, though. It's not super exciting, I know, but... We get to go for a chain, and then the copycats chain through each other, which is very, very powerful. This might be a Keep Spellblade for the end sort of run. I want to go for the high roll. Is it worth it? I'll go for it one time. Eh. I mean, it's decent anyway. It doesn't really matter, does it? It's powerful however you slice it here on these turns. But probably you just settle. It's not worth it to go for the high roll, even though it's fun. You can go for the high roll with Sushi. Ooh, Hexia. And we get Roulette or Dancer. Well, Roulette and Dancer are both pretty awful. I'm willing to keep Spellblade here. I think so. I think I do actually keep Spellblade here. It's been a long time. Since I kept a blue uh, a tier two to the end, it's been a very very long time. But I think Spellblade gets to stay. I will skip this. Roulette and Dancer are pretty bad in the Hexia, so we're just gonna try to chain Wanderer into Spellblade for big mana. Good with a defensive setup here too. We can, once I neutralize the imps, I can just put up a bunch of soothes. But I think going long into Hexia here is going to be very hard, is what we will find. And I want this guy to be rolling for sushi. If he doesn't hit it, he doesn't hit it, and we just lock now. Mm. I played this kind of wrong. Not even kind of, I played this very wrong. I was supposed to let Wanderer roll down here for the defy. Think? Maybe not. Hmm. I'd have to think about it. Okay. Uh, so... What I'm down to play here is... Burst, burst. Four mana. Burst, burst. Heal shield three. Soothe. I'm down to play this. Two imps dead and a soothe to neutralize some of my poison. More demons is very good for me, because the longer this fight goes, the 
more likely I am to eventually hit this setup. Oh wait, I'm getting another fucking spam phone call. They just, they won't leave me the fuck alone, man. I'm gonna freak. Okay, anyway, sorry. I'm Freaking is over. I have hit all of the pieces of the puzzle. Ready? So it goes... I have this chain here, though. Let's, I just have to play these turns and see what is best. Ready? Let's do it. So we can do this line, which goes bloodlust, six mana, and then eight mana. That's 20 mana. Versus... What would it be? It would be... Four... Four... Okay, 20 minutes better. That's kind of what I figured. Bloodlust is a little bit better here anyway to play for. But we go like this, Bloodlust. Now maybe 6 into Hexy is fine. That 20. How does it play out? Maybe like... Oh, I have to kill the demon off, actually. Hmm. Take me back to the start. I want to go here. 4 damage there. First, first, six mana. Blaze, kill, field, blaze, blaze. Oh, he dies. Oh, man. That's okay. I can take the trade. I think Warlock's death for a defeat on these imps. Maybe they win this. But I doubt it. Cool run. Been a long time since we got to do this. That Spellblade jump combo is kind of juiced. Copycat mana gain is pretty good. Pretty good. All right. Well, one more to do. How exciting. I It comes, comes at you fast. I'm not going to press submit, but here we are. Comes at you fast. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Join me tomorrow for the... The can I do it? Can I get the 80? Very exciting. And then we're just like, we're fucking cruising if I make it to 80. God damn. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.